Hey guys, um, this is uh, another video, but about uh, a more interesting topic, which is Lambos and girls. Um, so it's been half a year ago that I made a review about uh, the Lamborghini I bought. Um, I want to tell a little bit more about that and also about uh, girls because this is um, the first year I have uh, had a girlfriend. Uh, uh, I mean, I have girls friends before, but I feel this is a really a great relationship I have right now. And I'd like to tell a little bit more about that too. Um, so uh, the Lamborghini, I did a lot of kilometers. Now it has 72,000 kilometers and I bought it around um, at 48,000 kilometers one year ago. Um, and um, so that's uh, 24,000 kilometers that I drove with it in one year, which is a lot for a Lamborghini, but it's the only car I have and I use it as a daily driver. Um, and um, yeah, it's a really great car. Um, but as I mentioned in my previous review, half year review, review um, it has a lot of expenses. Um, a lot of things break down and that's still the case. Um, so uh, the biggest breakdowns I had had the first half year. And I think that's because I, when I bought the car, I started driving a lot with it. And this, this car is from 2006. So uh, I bought it at, uh, basically when it was eight years old or so. And um, it had 48,000 kilometers. So uh, in eight years it did about, on average it did about 5,000, maybe 7,000 kilometers per year. And then suddenly I buy it and I do that in a couple of months already. Uh, so, and before the sale, there was probably not a lot of driving done with it. So, and I made the beginner's mistakes of being too rough with the car. So I ended up having leaks and um, shocks, uh, right shock, front shock, due to dr driving into uh, great uh, potholes here in Belgium. And um, also uh, um, getting a leak in the steering house, uh, the power steering house, having to replace that. Um, the e-gear broke down, which I think is a problem. I would prefer to have a manual with these Gallardos, but uh, they are so rare and they cost a lot more. It's They used to be e-gear is with the flipper system. It's cool, it's fun. But uh, at the time, it was a new system. It was an option. It cost 10 to, uh, probably 20, 10, 20,000 uh, euro or US dollars extra to have that on the 200,000 euro car. Uh, but um, it ended up being a better buy to just take the standard manual because that was a system that has proven its strength over many decades and was fine-tuned to the and worked well, never had uh, any problems with it. But this e-gear system was new and yeah, mine broke down uh, and then you have to, uh, uh, I had to tow it and um, I had a, an expensive repair. So, um, since then, uh, I've had a lot of, in the past half year, uh, since my last review, a lot of small things, not major things breaking down, but small things. Uh, yeah, a lot of the, uh, for example, uh, mm, uh, the wheels, eh? uh, you hit the curbs constantly, so I had the wheels redone, uh, new tires, uh, the clutch soon has to be replaced, uh, that will cost uh, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 uh, The brakes soon have to be replaced. Uh, I had oil toppings, uh, you, every thousand kilometer consumes one liter of oil, in theory, because I just drove with it on a trip, 3,000 kilometers, suddenly I get the uh, oil, low oil pressure, and uh, I checked the oil and I knew after the trip I had to refill it, top it off. But um, on the highway I have to check it because it gives, uh, I get uh, a, a low pressure engine warning, uh, oil warning. 
and it ends up that uh, I had to put in four liters of oil, it was almost empty. And I had to put in four liters and I was still not at the minimum. Uh, but one liter extra, so five liters to just get, uh, to put back enough oil in it. So it, uh, it consumes more than a liter of oil when you are racing on the Autobahn in Germany at 250 kilometers an hour. It's probably two liters of oil per thousand kilometers. Um, uh, but uh, the biggest cost is like t small things. I use it a lot, so some things start. Uh, my, every month, every month and a half, I go to Lamborghini uh, service center to uh, have things done. Um, and so I lose a day, two days, and uh, on average, 500,000 euro for small things, small fixes. Eh? So I can certainly say that uh, for every 10,000 kilometer you drive, you also lose 10,000 kilometers, uh, euros in uh, just uh, things that break down. Mm. Eh? For example, the last fix was uh, the boards are coming loose, uh, the inside boards, so I have to replace that. It's 1,000 euro per board, it's 2,000 euro. It's just some at the feeds, these boards are coming loose, and I can't put it back in because it, it has already been done in the past, and, and now um, I, they can't fix it that anymore. They really need new boards, and yeah, the cost... Thousand euro a piece. Um, they also fixed. Uh, uh, that's for the future now. Uh, but um, um, just to put it back uh, a little bit decently temporary. That's a few hundred euros huh, that I lost. Uh, it's also making a lot of. Uh, there were some peeps when I was driving. A peep 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 peep. Something was not loose huh? and cracks in the back when I take a corner on a hill. Crack crack. So that was new, uh, it was been building up, so I wanted that fixed because you drive in a, a cool Lambo and then... Uh, but it sounds like you're driving in a crap car if things start peeping and cracking, so voila, I wanted them to fix that. And uh, that cost me also 600 euro. Um, yeah, um, the key uh, broke down, I wanted a new key, I had up to 300 euro. Um, and I just have the key and it breaks down again. Well, so I have to hopefully get a free one, uh, the next one free. But and so a lot of small things on this car, if you use it a lot, break down. Of course, I want it also to be in perfect condition. So I do replace all these things. Uh, and, uh, and maybe I could be cheaper by not going to Lamborghini, I have someone uh, doing it on the cheap. But the problem then I tried that uh, using Audi Garage. To do things and I get the impression sometimes they do things wrong and then it will cost you more in the end uh, so uh, shortcuts often are um, end up being more expensive in the end so um, yeah um, the nice thing uh, yeah so but uh, yeah, it's it's a lovely car. Uh, the prices of these cars don't seem to go, go down anymore. I bought mine actually for it's only seventy thousand euro, and currently, and that's a year ago. But there is none for sale currently at seventy thousand euro in Europe. A Gallardo Spider two thousand six. Uh, no, uh, it will cost you eighty thousand euro. So the prices seem to have bottomed out uh, of these old Gallardos. Um, and um, so from that perspective, I did a great deal. Uh, I mean, it was a much better investment than uh, NXT or uh, clumps that also went down in US dollars. Uh, so, um, no, that's not true of clumps. Then NXT, it's true. And, uh, uh, but of course, it's not an investment. Of, I mean, you only lose money with a Lamborghini like that, but because all the money I spent on this car in one year, uh, taxes 10,000, 12,000, uh, and then insurance that's actually quite low 1,000, 2,000. But then uh, it's just the maintenance. Uh, I drive 24,000 kilometers. Well, I lost also 20,000 euro on just maintenance stuff. Then you have all the fuel. Uh, luckily, oil prices are at an, a very low, uh, but still uh, the t a lot of taxes on that. So uh, every time you fill up, and uh, you can only drive 400 kilometer with that. Uh, it's 80 liters, but you consume on average 20 liter per 100 kilometer. If you drive it, 
the way you should be driven, which is sometimes you accelerate strongly, which I love, uh, but uh, and then it consumes on the highway, it's only 12, 13 uh, liters per 100 kilometer. But when you pull up, it's like 30, 40 liters per 100 kilometers. So on average, it's 20 liters per 100 kilometers, 80 liters in a tank. Currently, in Europe, here in Belgium, pay like 1.3 euro for uh, Super 98 um, uh, uh, fuel. So uh, you end up losing about 100 euro per gas tank, only 400 kilometers. So that's every week, uh, 100 euro for fuel. Uh, oil, huh? uh, actually, uh, is also, uh, you need quality oil. Uh, so uh, per bottle 40 euro uh, every thousand kilometers uh, so times 20,000 is uh, so that's another thousand euro in oils that I spent so it's uh, it's an expensive animal but um, it's a lot of joy it's a really great uh, ride uh, and um, uh, but yeah uh, I think it's definitely people love the car. Huh? Uh, the car is uh, standing parked outside. If you can see it there. You see the yellow car. It's beautiful. Huh? Uh, but um, people uh, love the car. I get a lot of thumbs up. I just did uh, a trip through uh, uh, through Germany and. Uh, yeah, it's a great car. You can easily drive 250 kilometers an hour. Um, not higher for me. Uh, the top speed is 310 kilometers an hour, but I never get that opportunity. And also, like once you go above 250, I didn't really get a chance, even though I've driven 2,000 kilometers on German highways. Um, half of it is at night, so then it's really not possible. Um, traffic, weather, eh, rain or snow, uh, no, it's not possible. There are winter tires on it now, so it's not recommended at all. You shouldn't go high uh, 300 with that. It's only for summer tires. Um, but when in the summer I've tried it to go higher than 250 when the opportunity was there and it just doesn't feel safe. The car becomes much lighter uh, above 250 kilometers an hour and it doesn't feel safe to me. So I think the aerodynamics on these Gallardos are not uh, that well done. Um, probably uh, McLarens are much better for that, uh, much better built to do such things. Um, um, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a, lo a super beautiful car, super sound. And um, uh, yeah, uh, it's a lot of joy. Uh, uh, and these older Gallardos, you don't have uh, much depreciation anymore. That's really amazing for a supercar. It will depreciate, don't worry. I'm not saying this is going to go up in value, these Gallardos, no. And they will continue to go down. Probably they will just stay at current price as the euro and the US dollar drop by 5% per year in value. So if it stays at the same price, about 100,000 US dollars or 80,000 euro uh, for cheaper, the cheaper ones with the high mileage, high kilometers, um, uh, they will probably stay at those prices uh, for another five uh, to five years or so. But that means it goes down by in purchasing power by 5% per year. I think that's continued to be the case, um, but that's a lot better than when you buy these supercars new, like the Hurricane currently, you need to pay 250,000 euro, but the year after it's like worth only 220, the year after 180, the year after 150. It does go down in euros or US dollars a lot per year. Uh, so you have um, uh, really uh, a very high depreciation. You lose a lot of money in that. Uh, and in, but of course the maintenance is a lot lower because you have a new car eh? so I do lost uh, a lot on that but if you do kilometers or eh, a lot of kilometers you will lose a lot of uh, actually uh, a lot more depreciation so you end up losing a lot more money with these new uh, supercars than with an older one even if you drive a lot of kilometers um, but still, uh, if uh, my investments go well, uh, I hope to buy a second-hand Hurricane. Um, I'm doubting between the Spider or the Coupe, 
uh, there are a lot of green uh, uh, Verde Mantis or Verde Ithaca or Verde Scandal, uh, green hurricanes. Uh, and I think even though prices now are bad, like they, they cost the same as they are new. So they hasn't, haven't depreciated a lot yet, even though they are one year old, only a little 10% cheaper than new price or so. But next year that will be another 10% off um, or maybe even more. And um, uh, because now the ones that want spiders, um, they have to buy the Hurricane Coupé. Uh, so, um, but the moment the spider is released, and that will be uh, in one year, then suddenly the spider was the much better salt in the Gallardo than the Coupé. Uh, uh, that might be again the case, so they might sell a lot of spiders, which will put more pressure on the price of the Coupés. Well, I like spider a lot more, eh, uh, Cabrio. Uh, but it is not at sa as safe at all, I think, when you uh, have an accident and you roll over. Uh, I, I find it very dangerous with spiders. You have these steel bars popping out, but they are this thick and uh, they can just dig in the earth and it's not go that high. So I can't imagine how you are well protected there, uh, your head. Mm. So. I think a coupé has the one big advantage is a lot uh, safer for rollover accidents and um, and um, ah, I mean the spider is gonna cost a lot for the years to come because it's only released in one year so then it takes another year for prices to go down so it's at least minimum two years before prices start to go down and so three years before you can buy a spider uh, that is discounted um, and so uh, that's very long I hope that my investments, Bitcoin, NXT clump um, go up this year in 2016 strongly and that I can buy with Bitcoin uh, uh, um, uh, a Lamborghini and then um, it will probably be a Hurricane uh, Coupe. I have also watched that the Aventador, it's really nice, but they're the same problem as with the Hurricane. They are sold, the prices are way too high. Uh, these cars are sold new for 400,000 euro. But today you will still pay in the second hand market for cars that are one, two years old, uh, also 400,000 euro. And most of them are uh, uh, also uh, with taxes eh? because in Europe it's nice. You have a very good, uh, a much better system in the US uh, when it comes to sales taxes. In the US, they are uh, there to, it's only 10% sales tax, that's good. But even in the second hand market, you have to often pay sales tax in uh, the, all the states there, some not. Eh? Some states not, like New Hampshire, but others like mm, Florida, eh, you, be, you have to pay 10% sales tax, even on second-hand cars. And um, that's not the case in Europe. Second-hand cars are tax-free, uh, VAT-free, eh, sales tax-free, if, if there was a sales tax paid on it. Eh? And many of these inventors, they are uh, uh, bought on company names, and so no sales tax has been paid, and they are then sold second-hand. But as if you buy as a private person, which I do, you still have to pay the sales tax. So you end up paying 350 or 400,000 euro, plus you have to pay 21% sales tax. So that's out of question. I, when I buy second hand, I want to have, uh, not to have to pay the sales tax. And yeah, uh, that's a problem. Uh, so that only starts to be the case when the car is older than one year, two years, when it's three, four years, then some private persons have bought these and are selling them and then you don't have to pay sales tax anymore. So um, I think this opportunity will be there with the Hurricane Coupe much sooner than with the Aventadors. Mm. But of course, price-wise, there's, there's also a problem with the Aventador. It's, it's, I think a cool, some of these Aventadors are super cool. I would love to drive in them. But as a daily driver, uh, the problem is that they are even wider than the Gallardo and the Hurricane. Another 10 centimeters wider. And I, it's really a problem to park if it's too wide. It sticks out. And in Europe, the uh, roads in the city are pretty small. So uh, you can't park it. Um, and then there's a problem with the Aventador, it still has the old uh, gear system. Uh, I think it's quite similar to the e-gear system of the Gallardo. It's quicker uh, to change gears, but it's clunky. It, uh, you go like this when you change gears. 
And for a daily driver in the city, when you often do low speeds, that's really not so pleasant um, if, um, that you have to, yeah, that you should have a more comfortable ride as a daily driver. And the Hurricane has improved greatly on that with the new uh, gear system, uh, double clutch, uh, so that you don't have any uh, bumps when you change gear. And it is uh, uh, a little bit wider than the Gallardo, but much um, more compact than the Aventador. So at uh, the daily driver, I think it's, it's probably going to be the Hurricane. But um, yeah, I think uh, when I look at competition, Ferrari, McLaren, uh, McLaren technically is a lot better than Lamborghini. Uh, the, cry, the, the cars drive a lot better, I think. I never drove in one, <laughs> but it's from what I read. Um, they are better in corners, better in acceleration. Although the Hurricane does accelerate 2.6 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour, that's much better than the Gallardi, four seconds. And actually, it is faster than the McLarens in acceleration. But to me, I think you get more bang for your buck with McLaren uh, when it comes to just the ability of, of the car. But for me, the looks are very important. I want to fall in love. I, 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 fall in, I, fall, I fell in love with the Gallardo Spider. And uh, uh, I can see myself falling in love with the Aventador or... Um, the, the the hurricane but for me it doesn't happen with the McLaren the looks are just not there for me and the Ferrari yeah, some of them are beautiful but I just don't have that falling in love experience with them so so yeah um, yeah uh, that's how it is mm. so in summary if you can afford it I think it's a, a great thing to have. And then I'm going to make another video about girls, about my girlfriend. See you soon. Bye.